Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to program into your calculator the inverse t function. This is a function that the TI-84 calculators have, but the 83 and 83 plus do not have. It's very similar to how the function inverse norm works. Uh, however, this function has to do with the student's t distribution, and what you'll give it for inputs would be the area to the left of whatever value you're interested in finding and the degrees of freedom. So where you might use this function is, say, when you are computing a confidence interval using the student's t distribution and you need to find that critical t value in order to compute the margin of error, or in the case of a hypothesis test, if you have an alpha value and you want to find the corresponding critical t value for that alpha at, in order to do the classical method of hypothesis test. So the inverse t function is real similar to how inverse norm works. It'll take two inputs, the area to the left of the value you're trying to find, and the degrees of freedom. Now, as I said, the 84s have already got it, and I'm going to show you how to program it into the 83s. Uh, so the, what you're looking at is the keypad for an 84, and over to the left would be the actual program code that we are going to add to this calculator. So to begin, I'm going to click on Program. And that gets me into program mode. You can see we have three options, uh, execute, edit, and new. So let's go over to new and hit enter to invoke the create new command. And I'm going to name this program INVT. And you can see that the alpha cursor is already highlighted or blinking. So I'm just going to type in INVT. Uh, you'll have to bear with me on my on the calculators you see on the screen the letters are really tiny but those are the alpha characters that you have usually in green on your own keypad on your 83 or 83 plus. Uh, now I press enter and that brings us into edit mode for adding the lines of code to this program INVT and as I said all of what we have here on the left side of the screen is what we're going to enter. Um, so just follow along you may have to pause periodically uh, as we go through this when you're putting it into your own calculator. So um, the first line is input area left, and uh, we have a lot of alpha characters here. Let's start with the input part. I'm going to click on program again, and then I'm going to arrow over to I.O., and the first item is input, so I'm going to go ahead and click enter, and now I'm going to type in this uh, string of alpha characters. And there's a few unusual alpha characters you may not be familiar with, but they are all in green on your keypad, starting with the quotation mark. So I'm going to click alpha and the quotation marks are over the plus key and then area left and these are all again alpha characters so alpha a alpha r alpha e alpha a and then there's a space character an alpha character over the zero and then I'm going to type in alpha pardon me type in left alpha l e f and then I'm going to give it a colon, which is the alpha character over the decimal point, and then another space, close quotation marks. Again, those quotation marks are the alpha character over the plus sign. Next, comma, and then alpha a, which will be one of the variables for this code. Once I've got that first line entered, I can uh, click enter to go to the second line. Again, another input command, so back into program, arrow over to I.O. and press enter, puts input on the second line, and I'm going to basically type in the remaining part of this line, beginning with the quotation marks, let's see, where, alpha D, alpha F, colon, Base, close quotation marks, comma, alpha D, and enter. Uh, if you make an error, you can, if you press clear, uh, it will wipe out the entire line and you'll start that line fresh. Otherwise, arrow back over to whatever character you've made a mistake with, and you can hit delete. I'm on the third line now, which is one arrow S, so one, and now the arrow is actually the the store key. And then S, alpha S is what I want to type in. Um, enter, 
Next I've got an if statement and I'm going to go back into program and this time in the first submenu uh, the first item is if so I'm going to go ahead and press enter and the remainder of that line is a less than 0.5 so alpha a now the less than symbol is something I pull out of the catalog menu uh, and so I'm going to go second catalog and I'm going to arrow up to get the, to the bottom of that menu. And if you just arrow up several steps, you'll eventually come to the inequalities, and you just want to find that less than symbol. There we go. And then once you've got that, you press Enter, and it'll put it on your program line. And then 0.5, Enter. The next line is the then statement. So again, program, uh, arrow it down to the second item in the submenu, then, and then I click enter to put that on the, in the program. Um, enter again. The next line is negative 1 score s. Now in this case, remember to click on the negative sign and not the minus sign. So negative 1 store puts the arrow in, and then alpha s. Now let's just, let me just show you something. If I press T by accident, if I wanted to change that, I'm going to arrow back over that, hit delete, um, and then alpha S. You could just actually type over anything you've made a mistake on. You don't really have to delete. Enter, and then the end statement for that if loop. Uh, program, first submenu, just arrow down to end, which is number 7. So I'll just press 7, and that'll put end on that line of code. Enter. Uh, the Third to last line is a, begins ABS, and that's just short for the absolute value function. And again, I'm going to grab that from the catalog menu, and the catalog menu is um, the shift function over the zero key. So second catalog, you can see the first item, fortunately, is ABS, or absolute value. So enter. Uh, gives me my first parentheses, and I'm going to type in two times alpha A minus one. Ah, and you can see I've made a mistake, so I'm going to go back over that and type in alpha A minus 1, close parentheses, and then I'm going to store that quantity in the variable A, so alpha A, enter. Next line is where I'm going to invoke the T interval command, and so I'm going to click stat, I'm going to go over to tests. And T interval is the eighth item down in this submenu. So enter. Ah, grab the wrong one. So now I'm going to hit clear. You can see it clears that line. I'm going to go back and try that again. Stat, tests, and I'm just going to click eight. That's the shortcut for uh, for grabbing the function in the submenu. So T interval, and now that takes four arguments separated by commas. So the first is zero, and that would be uh, your x bar value. Next is the square root function, which is the shift function over the x squared key. So second square root, and then d plus 1, so alpha d plus 1, close parentheses, comma. My third argument, which is d plus 1, I've got it in parentheses, but that's not necessary to put it in parentheses, but I'll just follow what I've got written for the code. So d plus 1, close parentheses, comma, and then the last argument is a, so alpha a. And finally, um, this last line, uh, display, that is a function we get out of program, and then io, and you can see disp is the third function. I'm going to grab that, and then I'm going to type in um, upper times s. Now upper is actually uh, a variable that the calculator makes use of, um, and it stores a value there whenever you run t interval. So I'm going to go into vars to grab um, that function. So I've clicked on vars, and then I'm going to press 5 to get into the statistics submenu, and then I'm going to arrow over to test. And then if you arrow down or up, you want to look for Pardon me, there it is, the function that says, pardon me, the variable that says upper. Okay, that, so that's the name of the storage location for the calculator. So I'm going to grab that, 
and it puts that word or variable upper into the program code, then I type the multiplication alpha s. And then I hit enter again, and then you enter any program you enter into the calculator with a blank line. So you see the colon that begins every line of code, and that one's going to be blank. And so now I'm just going to do second quit. And at this point, we're ready to run the program so I can show you how it works. So now when you want to run the code, you press program, and you can see in the exec submenu you've got the one function, pardon me, the one program that we just entered, INVT. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And that puts it on the command line, and then I press enter again to run the program. And it prompts me for my first input, which is the area to the left of the value that I'm looking for. Well, I'm just going to kind of throw in some arbitrary values. I'm going to say 0.57. Let's say that 50% of the area, 57% of the area is to the left of the, the T value that I'm interested in finding. Enter. Um, DF is degrees of freedom. So if our problem, let's say, had a sample size of 20, our degrees of freedom would be 19. So I'm going to enter that. And now when I press enter, it computes a T value of about 0.1788, rounding it off to four places. And now what I can show you, since my emulator is actually an 84, is that this works the same way, basically, as the inverse T function um, that the 84s have in their distribution menu. So if I go into second DISTR, and you can see the inverse T function is the fourth item down. So I'm going to put that on my command line and give it the same inputs in this way, 0.57, 19, enter, and it returns the exact same value. So basically how inverse T, the, the program works, is it does invoke the T interval command you can see in the program here. We just give it some convenient values, then we use a little reverse algebra to figure out what that critical T value the calculator used when computing the margin of error. Um, and then we do a little bit of uh, algebra converting the area to the left into the appropriate confidence interval interval when we use the t-interval uh, function. But that's just kind of a very basic description of how this code works. Not important, of course, to know that. So that is basically how you can program in the inverse t functionality into your TI-83 or 83 plus calculator. Thanks for watching.